Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video compares the E1 and E2 elimination mechanisms. This slide summarizes a lot of the important details that classify E1 and E2. Let's take a look first at the substitution of the substrate Rx, the alkyl halide. For the E1 mechanism, more highly substituted alkyl halides react fastest. Tertiary is faster than secondary, which is faster than primary. And the reason for this is that carbocation stability is the key factor. The rate determining step for E1 is the first step, which involves the formation of the carbocation. So stability of the carbocation plays a key role. For E2, the order of reactivity is the same as for E1, but the reason is different. E2 goes fastest also with tertiary, little slower with secondary and slower yet with primary. Here though the reason is that the transition state stability is the key factor. A more stable transition state for E2 means a lower activation energy and a faster reaction. The more highly substituted alkyl halides, the tertiaries and to lesser extent the secondaries, have more substituted character in their transition state which has double bond character developing. So since alkene stability is based on substitution, more substituted E2 transition states are more stable. The next factor is leaving group. A good leaving group is required for E1 because it leaves in the first step, the rate determining step. For E2, that is also true that the leaving group leaves in the rate determining step, so a good leaving group is needed. For the base component, in E1, weak bases react okay. In fact, the base is usually weak for E1. For E2, though, a strong base is needed, and this is because the base deprotonates the alkyl halide in the rate determining step. The stronger the base, the faster the reaction. For solvent, E1 reactions are favored by polar protic solvents. Here the reason is strong solvation of the polar intermediates, the carbocation, speeds up the E1 reaction. In E2 though, these reactions are favored by polar aprotic solvents. Strong solvation of the base slows down the E2 reaction, the reason being that the base is less reactive when it's strongly solvated. This next slide compares some additional properties of the two mechanisms. First, let's take a look at the rate. The rate law for E1 just depends on the concentration of the alkyl halide substrate. That's because it's the only species involved in the rate determining step. E2, however, being bimolecular, depends on the concentrations of two things, the alkyl halide, Rx, and the base. In terms of number of steps, the E1 reaction is two steps, with the first being rate limiting. The E2 reaction is one step, it's a concerted reaction. All the bond breaking and forming happens in one step. For stereochemistry, there are no special stereo requirements associated with the E1 mechanism. However, for E2, there's a special transition state geometry that's required. The transition state must be anti-coplanar. The leaving group and the beta proton have to be in the same plane, and typically they're anti to one another, 180 degrees apart. That's important and influences the stereochemistry of the products. Next, on to competing reactions. The E1 reaction has SN1 reactions competing with it, and this is always an issue. The reason is they share a common carbocation intermediate that could either get deprotonated to form an E1 product, or be attacked by a nucleophile to form an SN1 product. For E2, SN2 reactions do compete, however, substitution can be minimized by using a bulky base. The selection of the base can make a difference and allow for selective formation of elimination products over substitution products. An important feature of elimination reactions is that base strength determines if the reaction mechanism is in E1 or E2. Both E1 and E2 mechanisms prefer more highly substituted alkyl halide substrates. They both go fastest with tertiary, little slower with secondary, and slowest with primary. Therefore, the substitution of the alkyl halides won't distinguish between E1 and E2. They both prefer the same types of substrates. Base strength, though, is the factor that distinguishes E1 and E2 mechanisms. E1 occurs with weak bases, and E2 occurs with strong bases. You can think about it this way. In an E2 reaction, there's a strong base that'll proactively go out and attack the alkyl halide, deprotonating it in the beta position and forcing an elimination product. With E1, there is no strong base. There's no reaction until the substrate forms a carbocation, then the weak base deprotonates it. Here's an example of two reactions of an alkyl halide. This is a tertiary alkyl halide, which is a good substrate for both E1 and E2. On the left side, we have a weak base, methanol, and I can tell it's weak because the oxygen in this structure is neutral. That'll give an E1 reaction, and it gives the following alkene product, as well as the coproducts shown here. In the reaction on the right, this is a strong base, a negatively charged oxygen, and that'll proactively attack the alkyl halide and deprotonate it in that second order type reaction. That's an E2 process, and that'll give the following alkene, which is the same alkene. The E1 and the E2 reaction can have different products based on stereochemical requirements. In this case, they're the same. The other products are methanol and sodium chloride. 
This illustrates the concept of using base strength to determine mechanism. Weak base gives E1, strong base gives E2. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.